What is going on, YouTube world? Thanks for jumping in here. It is Monday, and as Monday comes, so do shipping weekend sales out. So got some got some sales to ship out. Thanks for jumping in here, guys. Let me. Uh, I had to restart my computer and, and download an update just to get this webcam working for some reason. So I've got to get uh, my spreadsheet back open again and my browser, and then we'll get rolling. If you're watching on YouTube, will you go ahead and type in a comment and let me know that you can hear and see me? And then I also want to test to make sure I've been having issues lately with the comments not generating. So I want to make sure that those do come through for me. So just say hello, type a comment, whatever you wish. Let me know that you're, you can hear and see me. Uh, let's see here. All right, spreadsheet open. Let's get eBay open now. I've got eBay and Facebook. I've got some sales from um, both platforms to ship out. Got four eBay sales, or sorry, four Facebook sales from this weekend to ship. And I've got 23 eBay orders to ship. Man, sometimes, why is this not working? That may be why. There it is. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm rolling here soon. But go ahead and tell me uh, tell me where you're watching from or who you are. Say hello. I Like I said, I want to make sure this chat is working. Um, And right now I don't see any comments, so, but I've, I've been having issues lately on my chat. So if someone will go ahead and type something. Just let me know. Let me know that you're good. All right, let's go ahead and get TikTok up and running. Let's see here. Let's go live. All right, sweet. It is working. Danny, what's going on? Thanks for, uh, thanks for saying something. But it is, it is working now. I don't have to pop out the chat, which is huge. Um, sorry, let me just get, let me get this going. All right, I think we're good there. Boom, there we are, okay. Danny, what's going on? Thanks for jumping in. Good to see you, as always. Got a handful of people in the YouTube live. All right, so I got actually 24 eBay sales that have come in from Friday afternoon to this morning. So 24 sales there. I've got one that's a combined purchase. Uh, buyer bought two things. And then I've got four uh, Facebook sales. And then... Um, I had two Facebook pickups. I actually went today, met someone, sold a $50 paint uh, print. It was like a Thomas Kincaid print. I bought it for seven or eight bucks and sold it for 50 locally. So obviously that's all pure profit because I didn't have to ship it. And then uh, Saturday, no, yesterday, Sunday, <laughs> the days sometimes blur together. Um, Sunday, I had a, another actually reseller reach out on a pair of Tevas that I was selling. And um he was buying for himself. He offered 30 bucks and we met up yesterday. So I only paid like five to $10 for those and made 20 to 25 bucks profit. So six total Facebook sales, if you include the pickups and then, um, and then, uh, let's see, 24 eBay sales. So close to 30 going out this morning. All right, getting eBay pulled up. Sorry, guys. I had everything ready to go, and then I clicked live, and my webcam wasn't working, and uh, I had to download an update, and that took literally 30 to 45 minutes for Apple to do its thing. So I've just been waiting, sitting here, waiting for it to up, update so I could go live. Uh, Nick, what's going on? Morning from sunny Yakima. What is going on? Ronald, thanks so much for the... the is, is that Ronald? 
Yeah, Ronald Botsart. Thanks so much for the rose. I appreciate that. Starting off with the gift early on. Boom. Thank you for that. Um, it's very generous. Man, just hit me up. I, I appreciate that, Ronald. Thanks for jumping into this live. And uh, for all of you watching, I've now, I've updated. I used to have TikTok down here. I've got TikTok and YouTube both right here, both by the camera. So I don't have to look at one and not the other. Hopefully I can look at both of you as I'm talking to both platforms. So we're making upgrades here. Um, but I've gone ahead and pr printed out my Facebook labels just to save on time. Like I said, I was waiting on that update. So I went ahead and printed out labels for Facebook and I went ahead and got all my boxes ready so that I'm not looking for boxes later. The Hidden Isle, what's up? Thank you for jumping in here. Nick, morning from Yakima. Um, yes, I ship, bro. Chris, watching on uh, YouTube. Loving what I do. Hi there. Guys, thanks so much. Um, a few shout outs this morning as we get going. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ship out this hat. Um, I've got it packaged up, ready to go in a Ziploc bag. I've got a video on this. It's actually one of my first videos on YouTube. It's a quick, like, I think five minute video. If you want to learn how to ship a hat, you can use a blow dryer. Obviously, when I fil um, filmed this video, it was like two and a half years ago before COVID. So though I'm not going to suggest that you blow into the bag nowadays, you can use a blow dryer to get this little padding and then tape it down. Um, but I don't know if you guys remember, but um, some of you were in a live that I was, I picked up these two of these hats for two bucks each, these Winston vintage racing hats. Um, and I was hesitant to pick them up because hats haven't been moving for me lately. And I'm glad I did because for $4 all in on both hats, like light new condition, hardly any wear. I've already sold both of them. This is the second one going out. I sold this on Facebook for... Um, $24.50 and made about $15 profit. Um, gosh, a lot of notifications coming in. So uh, funny story with this hat. Got to tell you about this one. I actually had some interesting dialogues on Facebook this weekend. Um, Blue, hi from Pennsylvania. Thanks for jumping in the YouTube live. Funny story. Um, so last night, this was my, like I said, my last one. I had someone reach out and they were like, hey, I want to buy this from you. I had it on Facebook. I had it on eBay. He was like, can I just Venmo you for $25 all in free shipping? And I had it for like 27. I'm like, yeah, that works. And I was sending him my Venmo and I, I had gone in and changed the price on Facebook because I thought he was going to pay on Facebook. And I brought it down to the amount that he was going to get um, for the all in price. And while I was sending him my link to Venmo, someone bought it. And I was like, he was like, okay, I'm about to send you the money. I was like, well, hold up. Don't send the money. I'm really sorry. Someone just bought it on Facebook. And I, I haven't canceled an order on Facebook. I didn't want to cancel. I didn't want to get that negative hit. Um, and so I was like, I'm really sorry, but someone actually just bought it. And uh, I'm, I'm going to have to ship it to them. So he wasn't very happy. He was like, seriously, dude, I told you I wanted it. I'm like, I know. Why didn't you just go through Facebook and pay for it? But I didn't say that to him, but I was thinking that. Um, so this sold, and then I had someone else reach out on this, uh, another reseller. Um, he was like, can I offer you 10 bucks? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm asking, I was asking 22 plus shipping. He was like, I'm another, I'm a reseller. I need to make margin. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm a reseller and I need to make margin. So um, I'm not selling it for 10 bucks, but glad I waited. Uh, thank you for the like on YouTube. If you guys that are watching all um, handful of you, if you'll go ahead and hit that like button and get this video seen by the YouTube viewers and world out there. So I'm going to ship this out now. Like I said, I've got the label printed off. Um, this was one of my four, actually six Facebook sales, two or pickups. So let's get this going. And while I'm slapping this label on there, how was your weekend, guys? Did you do anything fun? Have any good sales? Um, let me know in the comments. Rusty, what's going on on YouTube? Thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for watching and interacting. All right, so that one's good to go. And then uh, let's do this one. I've still got these Osprey, like this is just a, um, like a strap for a backpack. You know, this inserts into the back. 
And uh, I've had a lot of viewers on this, like a lot of people checking into the Facebook and looking at these, I think because they think it's a backpack and it's really just straps. So I took several pictures um, to make sure that they saw that it's just the straps. It's not a backpack. Um, but I'm sure I'm getting a lot of views from people thinking, you know, 20 bucks for a backpack. Rusty says, just got done with shipping for the day. Nice uh, way to go on that. Hopefully you had some great sales going out. Um, do you inflate the clear the bag? I do. Yeah, I inflate it. I tape it and then put it in a poly mailer. I've sold, you know, probably 20 hats over the last few years. Haven't had any issues with anyone saying they've been bent or anything. Um, but I do inflate it to make sure it gets that cushioning. Ginger, what's going on? Thanks for watching. So um, on this guy, this was brand new. I picked it up for 50 cents, sold this for, uh, I think it was $25, including shipping on Facebook. So um, good sale here. And this will fit the poly mailer. It's lightweight as well. Have to finagle this one because it's a little longer than the poly mailer. Yeah, I mean, some people put hats in poly mailers, some don't. Um, that's what I do. I haven't had any issues with it. I think if I started getting people saying, hey, my hat was crushed, I would then turn to a box. But like I said, never had an issue. No one has ever reached out on a hat post sale. Trisha, what's going on? Uh, Trisha just got a new work um, companion. I saw your video on the puppy that you got. Cute dog. Um, Rusty asks, what's your favorite album to listen to when you're listing, uh, and shipping? You know, I don't listen to a lot of music. Um, but if I do, I usually get some that are really chill, low key, um, like kind of set, set like an, uh, calming environment, I guess. But Novo Amor is a good one that I listen to. Ben Howard is another good one. Um, let's see. And then Jeremy Riddle is another another person I listen to as well. I'd turn that question back on you guys. If you're listing and taking photos and things and doing the normal eBay um, life, what do you watch or listen while you're doing that? Um, other times I'll listen to like sermons or messages or things like that. So it just, just depends, but I don't always listen. Um, Pink Floyd, nice. I've sold one of these before and I've got it in here. So I guess I'll just have to really um, get this to fold over. There we go. And the great thing about this is I've already weighed it. You know, obviously when I created the listing, I knew how much it weighed. So I don't have to do that now. I just slap the label on. All right, uh, that's two of four. Let's do the next Facebook order. I got these Hoka shoes. I just went through on Friday because Friday is when a lot of my listings on Facebook need to be re renewed. Um, so I started lowering a bunch of prices, making them competitive so that weekend shoppers would make some purchases. Sold these for $34 all in. You can see the soles there have a little bit of wear. Obviously, these have been worn pretty pretty well, but someone will still pick these up because they're really cushioned. So I got 34 bucks, and I only paid like seven for those. Uh, listen to Serial Killer Podcast on Spotify. Nice. That's a great... Um, my wife and I will do that when we're driving. We'll listen to like those crime podcasts. Um, we love podcasts for when we're going on road trips. Uh, Ginger says, I usually put on a movie or TV show and just let it play in the background. Sometimes an audiobook. Nice. That's another great option. Audiobooks. Um, Blue says, The Beatles. Nice. Danny, super fan, says, I listen to Jason Hayes because he's probably working right now. So thanks, Danny. Um, <laughs> you guys are too kind. Uh, let's see. Does Facebook charge fees like eBay? Lukey's uh, Mimi? No. That's why a lot of people are jumping on Facebook. Fast sales, pretty decent money, and 
you know, if you look at, let's not talk about promoted because you can promote on either platform, but just bare bones listing or selling fees, eBay is going to be 12 and a half percent. Facebook is going to be 5%. So the fees are a lot better on Facebook. It's just a lot easier of an experience. Um, so yeah, I, I've had a lot of success on Facebook and I've continued to list more items. I've probably got 150 items. But let's go ahead and ship out these Hoka's. These are women's and they're like a size eight and a half, nine. So they'll fit in a padded flat rate and we'll get these out. Or hopefully they'll fit in here, we'll see. The Hoka's, because they're somewhat cushioned, they're a little thicker and harder to get in sometimes. This may not work. All right, let's try this again. If I sell an item with no returns, why does eBay make me refund unhappy scammer buyers? Skyler, I'm, I'm sorry that happens. And yeah, that is a frustrating thing about eBay. It's They're trying to be accommodating to buyers just to get sales. They obviously don't want to, um, they don't want to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cater to scammers per se, but there's no way to know with certainty if someone is scamming you. Um, or at least from eBay's perspective, like obviously, you know, if you're getting scammed, but eBay is trying to decipher between a seller and a buyer who's telling the truth, who has a good track record. So that's why if you're selling clothes, I just recommend that you accept returns just because in cases like that, they can just claim item not as described, you have to take it back. Um, so that's what I would say, but I'm really sorry that's happening. Um, you know, I would try calling eBay if you can. If you haven't sp spoken to them already on this particular case and putting your story out there and maybe you'll get a, a favorable outcome, I always call. It's always worth it. Worst case is they say, you know, sorry, we're going to refund the buyer and uh, you move on. But if not, maybe you'll get someone who understands and can see your point of view and, and help you on that. Uh, Russ, Rusty asks, how do we decide which items? Sorry, I'm trying to get this in here. I'm, I'm almost there. Um, how do you decide which items to put on which platform? Well, Rusty, a great uh, tool. Um, okay, I'm passing on this. Shipping's already paid, so it doesn't matter what it goes in. Um, Rusty, think of Facebook as an older market, 40 to 60 year olds and up from there. Um, so items that would fit that demographic, you know, to the best of your ability, think about that and then put those items on eBay. Of course, I list everything on eBay, but I don't list everything on Facebook. Facebook is a younger market. Think 25 to 35 year olds. So you're thinking things like on Facebook, shoes, specifically like Jordans, you know, Adidas, um, sports gear. Um, I've sold a lot of like outdoor equipment for like baseball and golf and things like that. Um, vintage t-shirts, things that 25 to 35 year olds are buying. I would put that on Facebook. Um, I'm still experimenting with clothing, but the first like seven to 10 items I put up on Facebook were clothing, like men's dress shirts, and they didn't do that well, didn't get a lot of views. So I'm, I know some people have success with it. I haven't, so I haven't put a lot of clothing up, but all of my shoes and other like hard goods, miscellaneous, like outdoor equipment. You guys are really chatty this morning. I appreciate that. It's always fun to engage with you all when you're talking to me. So thank you for putting in comments and great questions. I'm um, glad that helped you out, Rusty. Uh, I have items listed on Facebook, but it never gives me an option to sign up for shipping. I've looked everywhere. It only lets me sell locally. Um, Teresa, I'm not sure on that. I, I'm somewhat still new to Facebook um, as far as the shipping goes, but I know... I don't, I'm guessing you don't have a new account, like a new Facebook account, but um, it should be on the second page of your listing. Should be right there if you click the button that says pick up only. And again, if, if you've already tried this and it's not working, I'm not sure how to help, but maybe someone in the comments can help if you've had this problem before in the past. Um, second page where the shipping is, 
that says local pickup only, click that and then it should open up and there should be several options with shipping in there. And again, if that doesn't help, I'm sorry. Georgia Peach, thank you so much. Have a great day. How come I don't sell on Mercari? I've got one listing right now, but um, I've just had a lot of success on Facebook and eBay. And um, I don't know, I, eventually I probably will have to start. I mean, if eBay continues to move up and slowly kind of, you know, if, if that population continues to get older and people aren't selling on eBay or buying on eBay anymore, I may have to look at Mercari. So we'll see. But as of right now, I have a lot of success. I still do about 90 to 95% of my business on, on eBay compared to Facebook, but that is, Facebook is growing for me. So I've got a rubber band here holding my phone to my computer so that I can have the dual camera thing here. Um, but I'm just making sure I'm seeing all the comments. Cool thing is, I, I mentioned this earlier, but some of you are in here. I sold two items locally to Facebook. One this morning, it was a Thomas Kincaid print for 50 bucks that I paid seven for. And then um, I sold a pair of Tevas. They were almost brand new. It looked like they hadn't been worn, but a couple of times I picked them up for like five to 10 bucks and flipped them for 30. The guy I met up with yesterday, he was like, do you, do you sell your personal shoes or do you resell other sh shoes? And I was like, actually both. And he was like, I'm a reseller too. So we got to talking and um, he sells on Poshmark and he was asking about Facebook. I'm like, yeah, you got to check it out. So it's always fun to kind of meet up with people in the reseller community, especially locally. Because other than Danny, who's watching on YouTube and this reseller guy, I don't know a lot of resellers here in this area that I've actually met before. Time to get these out. Like I said, labels already printed. And my last Facebook order just um, got ordered this morning, actually. Um, I was on the way to meet this, the Thomas Kincaid person I was telling you about. And, um, Someone reached out on a motorcycle jacket that I have. I have it for 95 plus shipping on Facebook. I picked it up for 30 bucks. It's like a heavy padded uh, motorcycle jacket. It's a Joe Rocket Ballistic. It's actually this guy right here. Very heavy um, armored motorcycle jacket. And um, the guy said, hey, I want to buy this jacket. Would you take $100 all in? And I said, yeah, that's fair with shipping. I'll do 100 so I lowered the price to 88 plus the 12 shipping on Facebook. And he was, I said, you know, do you want to go ahead and purchase through Facebook? Long story short, he was like, uh, um, I don't do all those apps. I don't know Venmo or Cash App. I don't know how to do this. Can you call me? And I'm like, can I call you? And then he had his name, Scott. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'll call him. It's a hundred dollar sale. So out of the ordinary, but let's do this. So I call him up. I'm like, uh, he's like, hey, this is Scott. I'm like, hey, this is Jason. You just messaged me. And he's, you know, down to earth guy. We chatted for a little bit, but he's like, uh, hey, I don't do all those apps. How can I pay you? And I'm like, well, that's kind of the only way that I take payment is if you have Venmo or Cash App or want to pay through Facebook. And so he's like, all right, let me get my girlfriend on the phone. So I talked to her and walked her through making a purchase on Facebook, which I've never actually done before. Um, and then th they made the sale right there. So $100 motorcycle jacket going out. And uh, that's my last Facebook order of, of this live. So I'll go ahead and get that going. Um, 
Rusty asks, while I'm shipping this, I'll answer Rusty's question, which Rusty asks, what's, in my opinion, what's the best platform for selling women's clothes? Um, I would say it's hard to just answer that one way. One, let me just start off by a disclaimer. I don't sell a lot of women's clothes, so I'm not the best expert when it comes to that. I know Danny, who's watching, him and his wife have a business. He's a full-time reseller. He sells women's clothing primarily and kids. So Danny, maybe you can chime in on that as well on YouTube and um, address Rusty there. But I'll give you my best, um, my best feedback to that question. I would say it's going to depend on what it is. But if it's like designer jeans, um, you know, more like designer clothing for a younger population of people, younger demographic, I would say put it on Poshmark. That's kind of where you find like designer clothing. Um, now, again, I don't sell on Poshmark, but that's I know that that's kind of where like your designer jeans and things like that. That's where those are going. Um eBay, there's still a great population on eBay who buy, but I would say it's an older women's crowd. So if you're selling, you know, things I sell on there are women's shoes, um, women's like sweaters and some like LL Bean, like button down dress shirts that um, more of a professional uh, office job apparel or attire. So um, eBay is still great, but just think again, older demographic on eBay. Um, and then on Facebook, I've been listing a bunch of women's shoes there. And I listed at the same time some athletic shoes, women's athletic shoes on eBay and Facebook. On eBay, in the first hour, I had about five views. On Facebook, I had about 70. So there's a huge difference. A lot more people buying on Facebook. So I would say Facebook and Poshmark are probably your best bets if it's some an, a women's item that is going to be for a younger woman um that i'd say 40 and below um hope that's hope that helps danny's kind of reaffirming that poshmark can be some work but it could be a good a good tool for you as well i know people have success there um let me get to shipping this i've got this box ready to go and i'll just show you guys who are watching who maybe don't know joe rocket is a great brand i've got a couple of these jackets but um, there's the logo right there. You can find like lighter weight jackets that are more of like a summer hot jacket. It's basically just a very minimal layer. I don't usually pick those up, but these that have like the padding in the shoulder, the padding behind the elbow here, um, pockets everywhere. It's got reflective strips. This is what goes for more money. I've sold these easily from $100 to if it has like a cool logo or design or some kind of branding on it, you can get $150, $200. So look for these Joe Rocket motorcycle jackets. Um, they will go for money, especially this summer. You know, uh, Best place to buy bubble wrap. I buy it from American Bubble Boy, and I've got that link. I've got links to all the supplies I use in my YouTube video. I've also got it on my TikTok channel um, in the link tree. So check that out if you're looking. American Bubble Boy is a great, I literally just ordered eight rolls and he shipped it. It delivered within two days, like quicker than two days from the time I purchased. So that's a great option. All right, let me get to throwing this in. Even though it's not a breakable item, I always just put kind of a layer in between the box and the jacket just to make it look a little more professional. I don't know if it's going to fit in this box, actually. May have to go up. Yeah, I mean, I could squeeze it down in there, but I don't want it to like pop out when the person opens it. So I'm gonna go for another box. Actually, I did have another box for this. Hang on one sec. Let's 
we'll see if it works in this one. It's a little better than the last one. Um, for Facebook, is it better to have Venmo or PayPal? Um, well, I would say like some people will reach out on Facebook and be like, Hey, can I just send you Venmo? Then you can, you know, they can send you the payment. You can just ship it to them and not have to, um, pay the Facebook fee. That's how I use Venmo there. It's not, I've never really had anyone, I guess, reach out on Facebook. Most people just go through that, um, Facebook, but I would say PayPal, um, Yeah, I don't. I don't really know, honestly. Um, I've got my PayPal set up. I've got my bank account set up. That's just how I do it. And then um, they figure out how to buy. I, like I said, I've never purchased anything on Facebook from a sh like a ship. I've never had anything shipped to me on Facebook, so I can't really answer that for myself as a buyer. But I do have PayPal set up. I've got my bank, and once I make a sale, it gets deposited after it delivers pretty easily. So. Yeah, and Rusty says Fox dirt bike stuff does pretty good as well. That's another great motorcycle brand or like, a I don't know if that's more like BMX or if that's motorcycle, but um, Fox is a good brand. Facebook is done. I've got a video on how to cross post from eBay to Facebook, and I've got it down to about a minute for each listing. So if you're interested in that, go to my channel and find that video. It's a super easy method to cross post your listing so that you've got visibility on both sites. Okay, so those are done. Now let's get some Facebook going or some eBay orders going. Got 23 to do this morning. Rusty asked if I have a shoe cleaning video. I don't, but I will say not on YouTube. I've got a one on TikTok, but um, Magic Eraser is truly magic. So look into Magic Eraser if you are looking for some ways to clean shoes. All right, I've picked up this brand one time based on a recommendation from someone. This uh, beta brand, you can see the BB there. Uh, it sat for a while and probably because they were shorts and they weren't going to sell in the winter, but Summer's here. These sold for $22, including shipping. Uh, Shelby says, just ordered from Bubble Boy. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> It'll be there quick. Um, so I got 22 bucks. I don't know if I can swear on this brand yet for me. Um, like I said, could just be a winter thing. Samantha asks, how do you make it so eBay shipping charges come out of your bank account? You know, I know that you can do that, but I don't remember where that is, honestly. But I'm pretty sure if eBay's, um, if you're doing managed payments, I'm pretty sure as of this spring with this new seller update, 
pretty sure that eBay is taking your labels out um, unless you've got a card. There should be some option. Um, maybe I can look at that after I print all these out and get you a better specific answer because I can't remember where that is, honestly, off the top of my head. This guy's just a Ralph Lauren cotton flannel. I uh, would have got more. I got 26 with shipping, but it was a men's medium and I just wanted to move it. So took a best offer a lot lower than what I was asking. Picked this up on a thrifting live. Um, someone said, hey, you missed this Quicksilver. And I was hesitant to go back and get it, but I'm glad I did. Got $27 on this. So um, $4 and a 27 within a month of picking it up. Uh, I, I won't really say like pick up Quicksilver unless you see the Waterman collection. Basically one word, but Waterman. That's how it's spelled. Those are the ones that I pick up. That was a good size too. There we go. Oh, thank you guys on TikTok for answering that question. I appreciate that. I don't know who asked it. Samantha did. Okay. A couple of people commenting. Samantha, I hope that answers your question on how to get those taken out of your eBay money. So thanks guys for jumping in on that. Uh, let's see here. BKE jeans. I got 28 on them, which is kind of low for BKE, but I think these had something wrong with them. I don't remember. I think there were a couple snag pools. That's what it was. Um, I don't remember where, but BKE, there's the, the logo on the back there. And then usually it has like a really cool pocket design. I've got a bunch of packages going to California. I've had several people ask me in the past, what are you writing on the package? I always put the state abbreviation that the package is going to, and that's how I know what label to put on there. And then if it's if I've got multiple packages going to the same state, like California in this case, I put the zip code as well. I guess I should be careful not to throw that against the wall since my wife is working back there. Um, okay. Tommy Bahama, another thrift live video find. Can't really see it because it's folded, but it's got beautiful print at the bottom there. Um, it's a 100% linen and it's a men's XL. Those are the so three great components to Tommy Bahama. Linen, colorful, larger size. Sold this for full price, $38.59. And this was one I paid up for. I didn't really want to pay 10 bucks but I did. Um, and within two weeks, it sold from 10 to 38. So good find here. I, when I first started, I would pick up Tommy Bahama all the time. And I would even get like the solid color shirts, the ones that didn't have like the Hawaiian prints and things. And I even got like the Tommy Bahama like dress shirt line that they do. And uh, those have just sat and sat for me. So I've gotten more picky on Tommy Bahama in the last year. All 
All right, pair of Merrill shoes going out. These have like a scratch on the side. Um, I got these. These were a retail arbitrage find. Paid 15 bucks for these. Um, probably they were online because they were flawed going through um, a different site. And finally they sold for 49 bucks. So brand new with scratches, but still going out. And I've got still a few pairs left, so I'm kind of like, just make me an offer that's decent. Um, let me get some wrap on these. And if I've missed your comment or you've had a question and I haven't said it, um, go ahead and put it in again. I'll try and get to it. Yes, Trisha, I sold the Pokemon share. It's coming up. You won't believe how much I got for it. So hang tight. Tommy Bahama jeans. Don't try and flip them. Leslie says, yeah, I've, I think I've picked up one pair before, but um, I agree with you, Leslie. Sorry that you're learning that lesson. Um, what is your go-to brands? It's a great question. Not going to try and answer over the tape here. And honestly, it's a hard one to answer. I mean, I could, I could seriously list off. 30 to 50 brands right now. Um, it just depends on the item. I, I know it's kind of a cop-out answer to not give you specific brands, but I will say I've got a ton of videos out there. I'll give you like a few handful of brands that I look for, but um, I've got a video coming out tomorrow that are 20 items that sold for me in the last couple of weeks. And so this is gonna include a bunch of brands. I don't like giving out just brands because people hear me say like, Ralph Lauren, and they go and buy every Ralph Lauren that they see. And that's not what I do. So you've kind of, you've got to learn the science. And that's what I do in my videos, like the what sold that's popping up tomorrow at 1030 central time. I, what I do is explain why I pick something up, what made me decide on it versus just picking up all of one brand. So I will say, look for that video. And I've got a ton of videos on my channel that are what solds or thrifting videos where I explain exactly the brands that I'm picking up and more specifically what in those brands that I'm picking up. So um, just to give you a few and keep in mind, obviously there are exceptions. I'll say Cool is a great brand, Sims Fishing, Pendleton, Filson. Those are all higher end great brands that are hard to find, but great when you do find them. Um, and then go to those videos on YouTube for a lot more content on specific brands that I pick up. But I do appreciate you asking that. Um, Paul asks a great question. Paul asks um, if you should list on eBay every day. And the answer to that is yes. Even if you're just creating drafts is what I do. So on a Friday, I'll create like 20 drafts. Saturday, I'll push through five. Sunday, I'll push through five. This morning, I push through five. Um, list every day, even if it's just pushing through drafts. If you have old inventory, I'd say um, old to me is like three to six months and older. If you have old inventory, relist it. Don't click relist. Click sell similar, change a couple things, and then click post, and it will update with a new eBay number. If you do relist, it's gonna keep the same eBay number and eBay will not think it's a new listing. They'll think it's the same item. So um, that's a great question. Hopefully that helps you. Uh, Teresa asks if my wife helps me find stuff to sell. Um, she does, like occasionally we'll go out cause she likes going, but obviously I'm thrifting during the week while she's working. So she's not usually there, but if on a weekend she's like, hey, I'd love to go to a thrift store or a yard sale. She'll always like while she's looking for herself, she'll, you know, pull out some good items in the women's section and be like, hey, check out this shirt or check out these shoes. So she does help. She's awesome. All right. Last for this batch. 
sold this Wrangler shirt, Pearl Snap, great color, pink. I don't know how many you know guys are looking for pink Wranglers, but this one sold for uh, twenty dollars all in. So let's get this ship in and get out of here. All right, first batch, success. <laughs> My wife heard that question and she just sent me a text saying, Thomas Kincaid is her claim to fame. Um, those of you that were in earlier, that Thomas Kincaid print I sold this morning for 50. I picked up three of those for seven bucks a piece and I've sold them all from that 50 to $65 range. And that was her suggestion. She was like, Hey, there's some Thomas Kincaid, Kincaid prints over there. And up until that point, I mean, I knew who the artist was, but I didn't know they had such a value. And uh, she definitely helped me on that one for sure. I should pay her like a finder's fee. <laughs> I'm sure she would appreciate that. these printed and out. Whoa. Leslie says I found a Thomas Kincaid canvas for five bucks and have it listed for almost 380. Um and on that topic, Derek asks, best way to ship framed prints. I've never done this before, but I've seen it. So just know that what I'm telling you, I've actually never done because I haven't sold uh, large prints like that. Except for, I mean, I've sold smaller prints, but large um, framed that are like bigger than a box. Obviously, I haven't sold. But I did see Harry Tornado. He posted a video on a, a like a framed print that he sold. And he bought pool noodles, which you can get for like a couple bucks and you can cut them to, down to the size that you need. And uh, if you make a slit down like half of it, you can open it up and insert the frame inside the pool noodle. So it's kind of sandwiched in between and that will protect the edges. And then you wrap that obviously in a box or some bubble wrap or something and then go to um, ship it. So look at pool noodles. That's a great option. That was a heavy sigh. For some reason, my labels are just like loading but not doing anything. Wi-Fi is connected. Come on. Been having Wi-Fi issues lately. I don't know why. I mean, we've got great Wi-Fi, a great plan. And it's just like halfway loaded from 20 seconds ago. What's the deal here? So maybe it's uh, maybe it's more of an eBay thing than my Wi-Fi. Steve says he's had the same issues with eBay labels. Be kind of annoying if I have to go through and print them all individually. Come on, I believe in you. You can do it. We're all cheering you on here. Stephanie, what's going on? Thanks for joining in the TikTok live here. Just shipping out some items and printing labels. Or at least I'm I hope I'm printing labels. I've actually never had this fail before, so this will be first for me if I have to go through and find them individually. All right, time to refresh. There they go, okay. 
that was the trick. The trick is refresh. There it is. Yeah, Steve, I appreciate that. Um, I did that actually. It turns out I bought that modem router combo like two years ago and needed an update. And I did that. It was running on some old firmware. Um, but I don't know. My wife and I are both working from home or both got Zoom and lives going and things. So that could be part of the issue, but we'll see. Um, hopefully we can get that resolved because we're getting 150, is it megabytes per second or something? That should be plenty. Thanks for the tip, Steve. I appreciate you uh, commenting that. Rusty said, do you wait to list seasonal items like coats until fall or do you go ahead and list it no matter when you get it? I list it whenever I get it. And I'm always looking to pick up even items that are out of season. I don't want it sitting around in a pile, not making money for me. If I can get it up on eBay, especially now, I've got 10,000 listings. I'm only using about two of those. So I've got 8,000 listings out there that I can use. So if I have to keep refreshing and relisting or sell similar, it's fine with me. But I mean, even right now, I'm having winter and summer items sell. So, um, you know, there are places where the climate is different in different parts of the world. I will say I just put out a video um, a week ago that is um, talking about how do you how do you know what store you should get or when to get a store or when to move up in store. I tell you exact number of listings for each of the first three store levels. So if you're interested in that, go to my YouTube channel and you can find that. Um, I've had a lot of a lot of interest uh, from especially new resellers just. When asking when does it make sense for me to get a store from not having one? And I explain all of that to you and store benefits as well. So you can find that video if you're looking for something like that. All right, we'll get the next batch going. Yeah, Derek, I'm not sure on that. He says he doesn't have a store, but he's able to promote. Um, that, I don't, I, I thought you had to have a store to be able to promote, but maybe there's a way. Does anyone know about that? Danny says with the new store change, everyone should now just list everything ASAP. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Danny's saying that um, he his strategy used to be wait and hold his seasonal items until the appropriate time. But when you have so many items or so many listings, if you have that premium store, you've got 10,000 listings. It makes sense to go ahead and get them up because you're not paying for extra listings. Great tip, Danny. Jeremy Colts Comics videos. Do I have videos explaining when to grow a beard and when to trim it? Yeah, I, I do actually, Jeremy. Just go to my channel, click subscribe, and then look for it and you'll find it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, Trisha, if you're still watching it, I've got that um, Twisted Toucan Pokemon shirt in this batch. Sold this Cabela's Guidewear. Guidewear is a really good, usually like moisture wicking shirt. Um, got $25 on this all in. I'll tell you what I do, Jeremy, to grow my beard. I'll give you a little teaser. Um, I go to Walmart and I buy that Chia Pet stuff. And then I sprinkle a little bit on my face. And it always does wonders. I, I don't know. I've always just had a full beard. Chia Pet is just, you know, it's amazing. Sold this Foot Joy Dry Joys jacket. Dry Joys means waterproof. And there it is right there. Got $30 including shipping on this. <laughs> Leslie says, I think Chris needs to answer beard questions. His beard is a lot longer than mine, but I just can't go much longer than this. It gets a little too much for me. This was an international sale, by the way. So going to Kentucky. And I think this is going to be more than a pound. No. Nope. It's under a pound, so that's good news. Chris, if you're still watching, give us your beard tips. How do you grow that gnarly beard of yours? Steve says he's got a pretty gnarly beard as well. Would give Santa a run for his money. I've had a beard for years, and I probably won't shave it for a while. I've I've kept it um, longer lately. This is pretty long for me. But if I were to shave this down to like stubble, I would lose about 10 years. You would think I was 30. And I'm not 40, but I am 39. So uh, I have a baby face. So I have to keep the beard so people think I'm older than I um, would if I didn't have this beard. All right. I sold two shirts to the same buyer. Got this guy. Uh, I believe I got like $45 uh, for both of these with shipping. This Armani shirt. Chris, check it out. Armani was missing a button. So I... I Accepted a best offer of 20 bucks. Brooks Brothers got 26 on, 20 or 26 on the, or sorry, 25 or 26 on this. So 45 all in on both of these. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be more than a pound. Yeah, so we're gonna go pad and flat right here. Make sure I got the right shirts there. Okay, I'd hate to, uh, I hate to send the wrong, because I have a couple of Brooks Brothers here, I'd hate to send the wrong one to the wrong buyer. All right, Jeremy, thanks for jumping in. He says he's back to work. Have a good one.
Chris, I bet even though you did trim your beard, I bet, I, I mean, uh, it's still longer than mine. So you still have the, uh, the authority to speak on a good beard. Vintage Polo Ralph Lauren swim shorts has the horse on the front and uh, got $22 for these. Be looking out for those um, Polo Ralph Lauren swim shorts if they've got like that plaid colorful pattern. I don't see them that often, but that was a good find. This is just a uh, Brooks Brothers polo that I got 25 for. Nothing fancy about it. Last two. All right, this Sims fishing shirt, you can see it's got the uh, Sims fish right there. It's got pearl snaps, great blue color, XL. I got $39 for this within a week of listing it. That's one where I sent, I had it for I think 39 plus shipping. I sent an offer to the buyer for third or an offer to the watcher for 34 plus shipping. And he accepted, which Sims is consistently in that range for me. And then Trisha, I haven't forgotten. Let's check out this brand. Twisted Toucan makes customized shirts. I featured this on Thursday on our show. This has a Pokemon print, like a Pokemon Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian theme, a bunch of different characters on there. I listed it for $49.79 plus five shipping, and that's what it sold for. Full price, $54 bucks from a $4 shirt in the $54. Here, I'll show you. I don't know if I showed you the brand, but that's what the tag looks like. Twisted Toucan. I couldn't tell if this was like a cheap shirt or not because the tag doesn't look that great of quality and the shirt, the fabric is really thin. But I knew with this Pokemon print, I was like, this got to sell for something, right? There's a lot of Pokemon fans out there and it's one of those unique pieces, again. Crazy thing is, we when I was we were doing the two flipping dudes show, I um, I got an offer on that for thirty plus five, and I was hesitant because I was like, I just listed that, and I'm glad that I didn't just accept that because full price sale, I ended up making another twenty bucks on top of that. Julie the Great, Julie, what's going on? Thanks for jumping in. Um. Yeah, I know. I wish I could have made this. I wish I could have sold it to you, Trisha, or to your husband, but um, bummer on the size. Speaking of that, perfect time to say if you guys see anything. Oh, I guess you can't really. I guess YouTube can, but TikTok, not really. If you see anything back there on the shelf that you want to purchase, let me know. I'll make you a deal. See if this label thing goes a little quicker this time. Happy Monday to you as well, Julie. Um, I did have good sales this weekend. I had a few larger sales, a lot of bread and butter items. Not wanting, I'm having issues with labels. I've got the labels up and they're not wanting to, the print feature is not popping up. Let 
Maybe it's hidden somewhere. Where is it? No. All right, Trisha, thanks for jumping in. We'll catch you later. Have a great day. Yeah, and I should say the uh, person that it lives, they don't really live in Denver. They live down in Douglas County. It was snowing there. Man, just having issues today with labels. Got my labels pulled up. And it, when I go to print, it won't let me do anything. Let's try refresh. It worked last time. We'll see you, Tricia. Did I plug it in? Come on, bro. Sometimes I'm not very patient with technology. Yeah, I may have to. Well, I'd say I may have to, but I've got TikTok open right now on my phone. But that may be an option that at some point I have to do if I can't get this to print. It's doing that thing where it doesn't want to load the labels again. Even though I already had them loaded. <laughs> Uh, if they keep going this slow, I'm going to have to work some overtime. Yeah, does eBay pay overtime pay? <laughs> Can I just um, put in a request for overtime, my overtime rate? Maybe to get some like free, uh, um, get credits on seller fees. That's the bummer news about, uh, I guess, you know, if you're your own boss and you do work more, you do make more money typically. More More time you put in, the more you make. But in this case, no, not with issues like this. Come on. All right, I may have to print these out one by one. Yeah, I, I had to do that before the last batch. Um, it's like, this is ridiculous. This usually doesn't, I mean, hardly ever takes this long to get labels to load. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to go in one by one and reprint each label, which kind of sucks, but at this point it's not doing what I need it to do. 
Sorry for the ins, the obsessive clicking here. Oh, there it goes. Somehow it's printing all of them now. Sounds like money to me. I've got uh, two, four, six, eight, nine more to print. Nine more to ship. While I'm reloading some of these um, into the next batch, what's uh, what was your biggest sale from this weekend? Those of you tuning in. Biggest sale from this weekend. All right, I've got... We recently got new phones. And obviously, when you get new phones, you get a new charger. So we've just from like years of getting phones and things like that, we've saved all of these like cubes that plug into the wall. We've got brand new cords in here. We've got some that are used, but I sold this bundle of Apple products for $33 all in just on like a couple of new cords, old cords in the blocks. So Apple products even used have great resale value. Um, and this was only listed for about a week, probably two weeks actually. Um, if you don't, no, yeah, you can sell the the iPhone boxes online. I sold a couple of those on Facebook for $20 plus shipping just for two boxes. It was just the box, nothing else. Um, funny story about that one. I haven't had a Facebook return yet, but um, I put in the title, no phones, boxes only. Doesn't come with anything but the box. In the description, I put the title, which had no phones. And then I put boxes only under the title in the description. Because I knew that people were going to be like, oh, two, two iPhones. But for $20, who's selling an iPhone 8 Plus for 20 bucks for two? So I get the order comes in. I had a couple people reach out before that asking, are these for phones? And I'm like, no, read the title. It says no phones, boxes only. And uh, so order comes in, person orders the two boxes. I send them off. And as soon as they get it, they're like, bro, <laughs> they're like, bro, these are just the boxes. And I'm like, yeah, please read the title. It says boxes only. And um, they're like, who the F does that? Who sells boxes only? And I'm like, well, apparently... A lot of people buy boxes only because if they're selling a phone, they want the box to go with it. And so this person was just going back and forth like, you know, WTF, why would you do this? And I'm like, look, I, in the title, it says boxes only. But I said, if you want to return this, that's fine. You know, let me know and you can return it for a refund. And then never heard from them. So fine with me. I mean, 
I did my due diligence. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know how how people miss that. It's like I had pictures of the boxes open with no phones in it. I had it in two places where it said boxes only in the title. It's just doesn't make sense to me when, when people don't pay attention so badly. Um, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. But I've moved on and... Uh, I didn't hear from them again. So I kept the money because it's not my fault. If they want to send it back, they could have reached out. I gave them the option. So $33 on that bundle. Sold these Hoka shoes for uh, $29 all in. 28, 29, something like that. Still have some tread left, but they've clearly been worn. Smaller size, women's. This only padded flat rate. Don't you just hate it when people do that? You know, when they don't read the directions, they don't read the title. It's like, if I just put it in like small print somewhere, obviously that would make sense, but several places. Okay, rant officially done. Apparently you all have had this happen too. <laughs> Uh, if someone wants a refund and you've listed no refunds, is it best to go ahead and give a refund? No, it's not. Um, it depends on why. You know, if they say it's broken, even if you don't take, if you don't give refunds, then obviously take care of them. If it's broken, there's an issue with it. It's not as described. You can always have them send it back. Um, it's totally your call. I don't always have them send it back if it's broken. I, I usually will have them take a picture to prove that that's the item I sent them. I don't just give refunds out. But if they're just like, hey, I just want to return it because I don't like it, then I would say, I'm sorry, I don't take returns. Um, that's totally your call. But talk to eBay about that too, because depending on what you're selling, um, you know, you can get advice from them on that specific case. So, yeah. Um, Naki Thrifts, not sure if I pronounced that right, but said, I hate it when you have everything in the title and description and people ask questions when the answers are right there. I think for desktop, that makes sense. But on the mobile app, it's not so clear. Even like, I agree with you on that for sure. So um, I'm definitely in agreement with you. But what I've noticed is the mobile app, you kind of have to click to get to um, that section where the description is. And so if someone doesn't click, they just look at the pictures. I can understand why they wouldn't see it. But on desktop, you click into the listing, it's got several places where it just pops up on your screen. So, um, but most people are buying from their phones. So um, what I've started doing with that, like 60 to 70% of people, if not more, are purchasing through their phones. They're shopping on the mobile app, not on their desktop. Um, and it's honestly what I do. I don't sit on my computer and buy on eBay from my computer. I buy on my phone. Um, but what you can do is like, if you have a clothing item that has a flaw, I put flaw in the title at the very end, all caps with asterisks, just so they see it. Um, I, I try and limit my returns on items like that. And maybe that person knew they were boxes only and were just trying to get a refund out of me. I, I obviously am not going to fall for that, but, um, they went away. So. Eli Thrift says, I have 15 Callaway shirts listed, uh, sealed in the plastic. I was able to scan the barcode on the tag in the sealed bag, but nothing came up. So a, a lot of times people don't use barcodes in their listings, so they, they're not going to pop up on sold comps. And that's a really good question, Eli. I actually just listed last week uh, four brand new Callaways that the barcode doesn't scan either. Just don't scan the barcode, just type in what it is. So Callaway OptiDry or Callaway, whatever that specific model is, search that way, not by barcode. Um, and if they're branded, even if it's just a logo with no words, it's still gonna knock the value down a little bit. So if they've got a golf course on them or something, or they've got a company logo, no, you're not gonna get as much, but um, they'll still sell, you know, I would say 
Like I listed mine for around, I think 24 plus shipping for brand new shirts. Mine were all 2XL and 3XL. They're all new with tags. They're just a white polo with the Callaway with a like a course logo on it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see the PS5 box only auction a few months ago. What happened with that? Did someone scam someone? Or, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in the hat in particular, Steve. Let me know what that was. Um, I didn't see it. Steve is saying there was a PS5 box only auction. How much did it go for? I'm interested in that. All right, got these hokas on the padded flat rate for seven seventy six. Going to California. Those watching on YouTube, if you haven't liked this video already, would you like the live? Sorry, I've got a rubber band, so if I keep looking down like this, I'm looking under the rubber band to read the comments on, on YouTube. Maybe it's uh, there. Let's do that. Uh, Marco is asking on YouTube, can you explain what the $20 of stock is? I'm new to reselling, by the way. I enjoy your inputs. On my, what he's referring to is, I'm going to go to my channel just to look at it. I've got some links on my videos. And in the description of each video, I say um, get get twenty dollars of stock with sign up and deposit at Stash. So I use Stash. I purchase stocks on Stash every month. I as a form of just like saving and investing, and it's basically a referral link. So if you click on that, you have to make a deposit. I'm not sure um, how much. So I don't know if there's like a minimum of like five to ten bucks. You can click in and you will get $20 of stock and I will get a kickback. I'm not sure how much I get. Honestly, I've never had anyone do it yet, but it's it's a um, it's an app that you use to buy stocks and you can buy fractions of stock. So, you know, Apple right now is several hundred dollars, I think, two, three hundred. Am I right on that? Let's just see. I don't want to misquote that. Yeah, 132.78. So you can buy a fraction of Apple stock. You can put 10 bucks in buy Apple stock and get $10 of Apple stock. So that portion on stash, it's very similar to acorns. Um, so if you do click on it and you do put money into your account, you and I will both get money, but you'll get 20 bucks. So click on it and uh, do that if that's interesting to you. Obviously that applies to anyone watching. If you're interested in getting $20 of free stock, um, or money to invest. Um, and then I also have acorns there cause I, I use acorns as well and you get $5 there. It's not as good, but, um, I will say with the acorns app, you can go in and if like I make purchases on eBay to get supplies and then money, a portion of my eBay purchase goes into my acorns account. So I get like 1%, which isn't much, but it's just free money. So I usually will do that if I'm making purchases online, I'll go through Acorns and get kickbacks that will get invested into stocks. So hopefully that's not too boring <laughs> for some of you out there. Um, hey, David, how's it going? Here's a Tommy Bahama linen shirt. I got $20 for uh, men's large. Had it for a while. I'm not sure why this didn't sell because linen sells well for me and it was a decent size. But glad it's gone almost two years old on this guy. David, I had a great weekend. Hope you had a great weekend as well. 
Steve says, not a scam. The auction was clear that it was a box only. The last bid I remember seeing was $799. Why would anyone pay that much? I don't understand. That's just outrageous. $800 for a box. I don't get it. Thanks for bringing that to my attention, Steve. That's just incredible. Sold these new with tags cut from the cloth women's uh, like crop jeans. There's the tag right there. I picked these up for eight bucks. No, these were four. They were, they're just a re regular tag and I sold them for 43. So put these in a pattern flat rate as well. That was an item that went fast after I listed it. I priced it to move. So those jeans are normally like closer to a hundred, if not more. And that was an international sale. And then I've got one more of this batch. Check out this mini mouse plush. I was starting to question myself because I've got another one back here on my shelf, but you can see she's like two feet tall and I got $40 for this guys. Um, I paid, you know, this was something I paid a couple bucks for and it went for $40. So great item, Disney tag there on the foot and a great sale. And I don't want this getting wet. So I'm going to wrap this one really well. just to make sure that she's protected. Steve says he's done quite well with uh, Disney plush. Yeah, you know, honestly, that's the first one to go for me. I've got a couple other plushes out there. And um, uh, it's something that if it's a big enough size, because there's so much competition for those smaller plushes that I don't think they sell. I mean, you can see this piece right here. I mean, it's brand new with the tags. We got it for like 10 bucks, nothing, no views, nothing. So I'm not picking these up anymore. Um, but those larger plushes, Mickey, Minnie, Disney characters, yeah, they do well. Yeah, David, that's more of a, a one-off item um, than different than normal, which I like. David was on our show last week talking about he loves picking up the one-offs and I got to admit, I'm getting more into that as well. They're definitely more fun than just like picking up a dress shirt. Yeah, some comments coming on, coming in on plushes. Um, if you guys have sold some really interesting plushes, let me know. Uh, Steve says sold a Robin Hood, new with tags for sixty five, paid a buck. Was that a large plush? All right, almost got her done. Seal up the bottom. I mean, the great thing about selling plushes, even large ones, is they're lightweight. I mean, she's probably a pound or less. The only thing is she's just a bigger doll, so I have to get a box, not a not a poly mailer. 
Gun to bears for 30 bucks each. Never heard of those. Sold a gun, little foot for 21, paid a dollar. I wonder what gun is. I'll have to look that up just so I can get a visual. Help me remember it. Oh, wow. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. I'll be looking for those gun bears. I mean, this whole box is only two, it's less than two pounds. So obviously it's going to be more on the size. It's going to cost more than the weight, but it's going to Ohio, which isn't far. 16 by 10 by 10. I charged 10 bucks for that. That was 8.59. So, um, Give me one sec, guys, and I'll be right back. I say something bad about shirts. I don't know, Chris. I've got, I've, like I said, I've got another one of those mini mouse dolls. I think they take longer to sell. That one didn't, but I've also got a Dory plush, like a Finding Dory from Finding Nemo. Um, it's huge. She's like um, 40 something, no, maybe not that big, 29 or 30 inches long. And I've had that one the longest just kind of sitting there, but slowly been lowering the price down just to get a buyer. All right, here we go with labels again. Yeah, the bear in the wild, but I, I wouldn't say that I really know a lot to look for. I think, don't they have like a heart? Heart on the chest somewhere what's like the distinguishing mark for a build-a-bear on the bottom of the foot Build a bear on the paw. Okay, good to know. Is it a heart or is it just does it just say build a bear? Build a bear in a heart. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I'll have to look for that. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about them. I've just never found them or at least known what to look for. This is just getting out of hand. <laughs> Guess while I'm waiting, let's go ahead and get the next batch going.
good thing I don't sell hammers. That's very true. I'd be using it right now on this on this uh, computer. Plant based, Tracy. What's going on? Okay, my patience is being tested today. Let's see if I can do this the back way, like I just did. I'm basically going into my orders tab and clicking shipping labels. Okay, I think this is gonna work. For some reason, the way I normally do it isn't loading, but when I do it this way, it's working. Chris, do you even flip, bro? Go do something. Matt's girl, Nikki, great question. I actually have a video on that. It's really short, shows you exactly where that coupon is. It's pretty recent in my channel too. Um, I can never remember it. I, I, I actually created it for myself because I always spend some time looking for it. So go find that video in my YouTube channel and watch it if you wanna know where to get that. I'm sorry, I can't tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> Chris, it's because you're in the future. This isn't a competition, guys. Settle down. Got some comments coming in on YouTube. Okay, last four. My lady has actually already, um, my post office lady that picks up my packages has already come and gone. So I'm going to have to drop these off as I've been doing on Mondays. Lisa Go Girl, what's going on? One, two, three, four. This guy right here goes to an iPhone. It's an OtterBox commuter case uh, used for three days. Picked it up for 15 bucks at Best Buy. We just got new phones and I had ordered a case, but it wasn't gonna be here until a few days after I got my phone. I didn't wanna have it. I was just afraid I would drop it. So I went and picked this up at Best Buy, really cheap for 15 bucks, sold it for 11 this morning. So gotta love um, buying stuff to use for a little bit and then um, selling to get your money back or at least most of it. So $11 all in with shipping. Um, thank you, buyer, for letting me use this. And then I'll, I'm out of bubble wrap, but I don't really need this. I don't need to put that in bubble wrap. It's a hard case. It's honestly the great thing about selling online. Like there are so many things where I'm like, will I want this? Like um, sometimes gadgets, like techno technology um, things, like I get really interested in, but then like a fitness watch or something, I'll get it. I may wear it for six months and then not wear it again. And you can always sell it and get almost, 
you know, if it's in great condition, almost all of your money back. And so it makes it easier for me to, to make purchases because I'm like, look, I'll try it out for a while. If I don't like it, I'll just sell it and get my money back. Same thing with clothing too. I'll wear a shirt for a while. I get tired of it. And then I just sell it and get my money back. I did sell it on eBay. Yep. 11 bucks all in on the, uh, on the case. Steve, thanks for jumping in. Always a pleasure. Have a great day. Pearl Izumi cycling jersey went out, uh, sold last night for $31.09. Had great colors. Pearl Izumi is a great cycling brand. I've always done well with this, whether they're jerseys or shorts. Didn't have that very long either. Sold these this morning, these uh, Cabela's cargo hiking um, pants. They're convertible. And I got $24 all in. And down to the last item, it's Ralph Lauren Blake. You can see the model there right under the tag, Blake button down shirt went for $24 all in men's 2XL. Not a bad color, yellow's not great, or at least in my opinion, um, but I still got 24 bucks for it. Um, the why the will dawn. Or yeah, the will dawn. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um yeah, I have not sold Otterbox honestly on eBay before. I got really nervous because I've heard a lot of people taking them down. But I think the thing that didn't that didn't bother me as much is that it was used, it wasn't brand new. I've heard that if you're selling brand new otter boxes, you will get Vero's like that. So um, I was very hesitant at first, but realized I'm not selling it as new. So I think I'm, I'm okay. Um, so that's a tip for you guys out there that may not know that. Um, Otterbox monitors eBay and they will pull your listing down. I think if you're listing new otter box cases, so. Um, there, there's a, a Goodwill close to us that I've been to recently. They had tons of Otterbox cases, brand new in the box. They were selling them for a buck each. And I thought, Hey, I could buy like 50 of these and sell them for like, you know, five to seven, eight bucks a piece. But for that reason alone, I did not buy those. I didn't want to get stuck with 50 cases that don't sell because of Vero's. All right, I think we're good to go. No, we're not. Good thing I looked at this. I have one that I forgot to put in here. Have you ever forgotten to put in a weight on one of these labels and the post office charges you later? <laughs> I've had a couple of those recently. So I got a great start to May. Obviously, Saturday was May 1st. Um, total in sales between eBay and Facebook, I'm sitting at, and then a few sales from this morning. Obviously, I had two or three sales this morning already. I'm sitting at um, 807.72 in sales for a little over two days, 
which is a really good start for me. So I hope that it continues that trend of like three to 400 a day. We'll see what it does. I have a notification on eBay. So I'm wondering if I have Wondering if I have an offer. I'll have to go check here in a sec. Uh, yeah, l last month was my the best month I've had since January of 2020. So um, sales have been somewhat down for me just because I got rid of a lot of inventory when I moved and I'm slowly building back up. But for someone who asked how many items I have listed, I've got 1440 listings and some of those are multi-quantity. So I think I'm sitting at close to 1500 items on eBay. Um my goal is to get a few more hundred up, keep growing until I get uh, maybe close to 2000, maybe not that much, but as much as I can hold in my garage, I'm getting close to maximum there. I think I can get two or 300 more and then I'll probably just maintain at that point. So if I sell 280 items in a month, I'll just go replenish with the 280 items the next month. Uh, Huda said, can you repeat what you said about otter boxes? Yeah. I, now don't hold me to this, but Otter Otterbox, the brand is very particular. And there's some companies like this that if they will monitor eBay for listings and then they will report your listing to eBay and then eBay will remove it and give you a Vero. And I think the reason why I didn't get that on that Otterbox was because it was a used and obviously you're entitled to sell used items. But if you sell it new, I think they will take it down. So you don't want Vero's. You don't want to be suspended on eBay. Uh, another word is, and if you guys think of like Vero keywords or brands, go ahead and put it in the chat um, and I'll read them out, whether they come in on YouTube or TikTok for others. Um, if you've had any anything, because what we don't want if you're a new reseller is for you to get a Vero, but you can't put Velcro in the title. That's kind of a newbie mistake. I've made it before. I got suspended for three days because I had a couple of Vero's and one of them was Velcro. Um so don't ever put Velcro in the title. You'll get taken down like that. Apparently, Otterbox is monitoring. Um, so why didn't I buy them as new and sell them as used? Because then I wouldn't get as much money. They were older models. They were like Apple iPhone 6, which not many people have anymore. So they would have taken a long time to sell. I could have gotten a Vero. A lot of things working there. that, And I would have made like a dollar or two a piece. So it, wouldn't, it wasn't worth it for me to invest that much money into that many cases and then eventually be stuck with them. Yeah. Reseller on the road confirms you can't sell Otterbox as new. So you could list it, you know, this is kind of an Amazon trick, but you list it as used like new. And then maybe in the description, you can say brand new. I'm not sure. I, Cause I think they're just monitoring titles. So Otterbox would go on eBay search for titles. So if it's in the description, I don't think they'll really see it. Um, so you could list it as used and then you can say excellent light new condition or brand new in the in the, the description. But don't take my word for that. If if you don't feel like doing that, don't do it. I don't want to I don't want you to risk your business. Danny said had two great weeks of uh, April, third week was okay, and last week was oddly slow. Yeah, I I the first two weeks of April for me were just killing it. And a lot of people out there experiencing the same. And then all of a sudden, um, the last couple of weeks slowed down. I was still growing. I was still getting more sales, but not as much as those first two weeks. So Danny, I can relate with you on that.
Um, Chris has a good point as far as the Vero conversation I was just having. Um, you can't sell inauthentic things. Um, I have once listed a Louis Vuitton pair of jeans that I got in Seattle. Thought they were real. They had the tags. And then it turns out they were fake. So I got a Vero for that. Um, there are certain brands that are very picky on that. Obviously, if you're trying to sell fake designer stuff, especially like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, um, even some not as fancy brands, they're going to get you for that. So be very careful. He's uh, Chris says inauthentic Harley will get Vero'd real quick. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you're, if you're ever wondering, like for me, I thought the Louis Vuittons were real. Obviously I wouldn't have picked them up if they, if I knew they weren't, but um, you just got to be careful. Where is the photo taken on my wall? Um, I, that was a, a, someone I know was selling their prints and I wanted to support them. So I bought a bunch of little cards. That one was, I'm not sure where exactly that is, but he's from Wyoming. So I think it's somewhere close to Wyoming. And then Teresa said, um, If, for old for old items on eBay, old listings, um, would I suggest selling similar if they have a lot of watchers? Yes, and I do it all the time. I'll end it and then relist, sell similar is what I mean by that. Um, I know that's kind of confusing. But you just don't get a lot of new watchers if it's an old listing. It gets pushed down the search results, so it's better to sell similar. Um, what happens is because eBay, they used to have where um, your items would end and then you'd have to go relist them again. But now with their good till canceled, they just automatic, automatically relist. The reason why they did that is to keep the view, uh, to keep like the watchers on those items. So if I'm watching an item, let's say I'm watching this shirt on eBay and then it goes through 30 days, I didn't buy it. So it's gonna relist it. It's gonna keep me as a watcher on it as a good till cancel. So even though I may have forgotten about this shirt and I don't really care about it anymore, I'm still technically watching it, but I've since forgotten. There may be some people out there that are just taking their time and not sure if they're gonna buy, but I still recommend even on those old listings, if you've got a bunch of watchers, go ahead and do the sell similar because Unless I go in and take myself off as a watcher, I'm going to appear as a watcher to that seller, even though I may have already forgotten about it. So hopefully that answers your question there. That may be Montana. I don't know. He, I just don't know where it's taken. I'll see if it's got, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know where that was taken. Yeah, someone asked on the Vero conversation instead of Velcro, can you use hook and loop? You can. I just, because it's a lot of, it's wordy, hook and loop. I just don't put that in the title because it takes up too many of my space and characters. So, um, but I sometimes I will use Velcro in the description again, because brands aren't searching your description. They're searching your title. How long do I let them go before I relist? I've started relisting after three months. I would say for sure by six months relist, but I've just, because I've got so many listings, I'm never gonna use up all the listings, 10,000. I've, I've just been relisting after three months. Thank you for following me, Maggie. If you guys have any other questions, I'll hang with you for a sec. Um, or just want to chat about anything, but I'm pretty much done shipping. So I don't have anything else to show you shipping wise. And I th thought I had an offer, but I don't. Um, I had a notification of just payment, I think, on an item. Yeah, if you've got listings that are over a year old, I think what you'll notice is if you go and do that technique I was telling you about, where you end and then sell similar, change a couple of things, you'll start to notice that when you relist it, you'll get some sales on old inventory. Maybe you drop the price, maybe you update your photos, but make sure it's fresh, make sure that it's still um, a good listing all around. 
And I think you'll be surprised that you'll notice some of those every once in a while when I relist, I always get a handful of sales from a batch. Like say I relist 50, I'll always get like three or four that come through as quick sales on old items. So And if you're still watching with me and you haven't liked yet, will you like my YouTube video? I appreciate it, guys. Smash that like button. Isn't that how I'm supposed to say it? Yes, it's better to sell similar than relist. because you're getting a new eBay listing number, where when you relist, eBay relists the old number, and so eBay still registers that as an old listing, even though you relisted it. So yeah, definitely. Bill, what's going on? Hope you're doing well, Bill. All right, guys, I've got some stuff I gotta do today, and we're actually taking off early um, to go watch my niece's baseball game. Um, so I've got to run out and drop this stuff off at the post office and then get a couple things done before we head out. So, um, I hope you guys have a great day and thanks for jumping in. I really do appreciate it. It's fun to see you all here. So happy selling and, uh, get some good sales out there today. We'll catch you later.